Hey guys, this is Craig Migliaccio with AC Service Tech, and today what we're going over are the refrigeration service valves and air conditioning service valves found in the HVACR industry. So here we have multiple types. These are the two position service valves. These are three position service valves, and then we have the ball type valve right here. We have our ratcheting service wrenches used to open or close the service valves. We have the valve core removal tool, our port caps, the Schrader valves, and also our low loss fittings that we can use on the end of the refrigerant hoses in order to gain access to the ports. Check out our book, The Refrigerant Charging and Service Procedures for Air Conditioning. So in this book, we go over the connection and the disconnection of the refrigerant hoses, how to check the refrigerant charge, and what to look out for in reference to troubleshooting. So we have this book. It goes through the basics all the way through the troubleshooting, and we have sample pages over at our website at acservicetech.com. This here is the three position service valve and this is a suction line service valve so this was mounted to the side of the compressor and this tube connects to the evaporator anytime you come up to a three position service valve that's on an existing system you're going to have this stem you're going to have an extended stem first of all but this is going to be in the back seated position which means all the way up and you're going to notice that there is no valve core otherwise known as a schrader valve inside the port here so you would make sure to first connect your hose onto the port and this is going to be in the back seated position you would have to take a ratcheting service wrench and once this is connected to your manifold gauge set you can then mid seat this 180 degrees and what's going to happen is you're going to have access to the system's refrigerant charge through a pathway on the inside of this so right up through here you're going to have your your access so right now is it is considered the mid seat position. This is the back seat position and when you do do a back seat position you want to make sure that it's nice and tight before you disconnect your refrigerant hose from the port. So there's there even though it's a three position service valve there is two mid seat positions. So you have the back seat where we're at right now and then you have the first mid seat position which is 180 degrees to gain access to the port and then the second mid seat position is when you have that stem halfway down between the front seat and the back seat position so this is used for doing vacuums or recovery so that you you have a good area to be pulling the the refrigerant through or during a vacuum just to be able to pull the air or nitrogen through then you have the front seat position, and the front seat position is when this is down all the way. So if you can see, there's a little lip down there. So this, this part right here is going to get sealed down there, and you're no longer going to have the compressor connected to the evaporator once you have this all the way down in the front seat position. So this is the front seat position. And if you're doing the real front seat position with a set ratcheting service wrench you're going to want to end up getting it tight so that it locks right there so now you have the compressor still connected to the service port but you no longer are connected to the evaporator so that's the positions of a three position service valve for a refrigeration system but this is the suction side so let me show you what a liquid one looks like i'm actually going to show you a king valve next this is another three position service valve, but this one is attached to the receiver tank. And because it's located on the receiver tank, it's known as the king valve. So this one can be used to pump the system down in an automatic pump down system or even a non-automatic pump down system. But basically this right here is going to connect to the side or the top of the receiver. And right here you see that in the front seat position, we're all the way down front seats all the way down and you are no longer connecting the receiver tank to the liquid line so I don't know if you can see this but in the front seat position all the way down which is clockwise all the way down it's going to lock off the liquid line and it's no longer going to connect to the receiver tank but you are going to have the receiver which will be connected right here connected to the port so if you need all three to be connected you're going to have this in the mid seat position when it's all the way in the back seat position, it's going to act just like the, the standard three position service valve and it's going to, to shut off this access port right here. So during normal operation, it's going to be all the way back seated, counterclockwise all the way up.
This is a three position service valve for an air conditioning and heat pump system and the inside guts are going to be the same as a three position service valve for refrigeration and also the back seat position is going to be the same as well. So the back seat position is going to cut off any access to the support but the thing that's different is where the tubes are connected to. So on a uh, service valve for air conditioning this one right here is connected to the compressor whereas with refrigeration this bottom one right here is connected to the evaporator. So for air conditioning, this tube is the one that's connected to the evaporator. So it's reverse. So that's the big thing that's different between the two and what a lot of people get mixed up on. So if I was to turn this all the way down, that would be the front seat position. So you're gonna have the front seat position is when it, this pipe is locked off. And during that time, you're gonna be able to pump down the system. Because this is connected to the evaporator, you're going to have access to this, to this port here. When this is all the way down, that's considered the front seat position. So you'd be able to tell when you have completely pumped down the system when you're at, say, zero PSIG. So right now, it's actually still in the mid seat position. Let me show you what the front seat position looks like. So there's the front seat position. It's all the way down clockwise. So this, this three position service valve you need to go ahead and tighten it just like you do on the three position service valves for refrigeration. But when you get in the habit of tightening the front seat and tightening the back seat, you don't want to bring that over to say a two position service valve. When you're, when you're backing this valve up, you don't want to over tighten it upwards. So you want to just remember that, that you can always tighten the front seat positions clockwise all the way down, and you can do the same for this two position service valve. You can front seat it tight all the way down, but when you're backing this valve up, you do not over tighten it. Any, when it's almost all the way up, that's, that's it. You're done. You don't have to crank when you're all the way at the top with this. But with the three position service valves, you have to. So once again, counterclockwise all the way up and make sure it's tight before you disconnect your hose at the port right here. Then you leak check here, leak check here to make sure that you're not leaking, that there's no bubbles forming or glistening, any type of movement of the refrigerant coming out of the system. Here we have a ball valve type service valve and up at the top it's going to show you the, the directional flow. So right now it's fully open and you have a pin right here that's going to to stop it from being turned too much. So right now we're shutting off the flow and then this is opening the flow back up again. Now you notice that this does not have a port on it so you have your your access port over here and it has a valve core in it otherwise known as the Schrader valve. So this valve this particular one does not have any way of shutting off the flow at the port. It is also welded shut so there's less chance for leaks in the side but it's possible to have a leak up here as well, so you should leak check this up here. Here you have the two position service valve, and this is the most common service valve used in air conditioning. So up at the top here, you have a fully open position, which is where it is right now. It's all the way up, but it's not tightened all the way up counterclockwise. It's still a little loose, but it's all the way up to the fully open position. So you have that position or the front seat position. So you technically cannot backseat these and shut off the refrigerant flow going to the port. That's why we have the, the valve cores in the port right here. So this is the suction line one, and then these are both liquid line ones. This liquid line two position service valve happens to have a chamber right here for the metering device. This is a common liquid line service valve found on a Bryant Carrier Pane heat pump. So in this, if this was unscrewed, you're gonna have your metering device in there. So during air conditioning mode, this is gonna be in the bypass position with the, the metering device coming forward this way. And during heat mode, this metering device is going to be pushed and it's gonna be the active metering device in heat mode. But otherwise, uh, in, in air conditioning mode, it doesn't play any other part. The refrigerant should be able to, to bypass through and around the inactive metering device while the liquid is heading towards the, uh, the thermostatic expansion valve at the evaporator. In the access port here, you're gonna have a valve core, otherwise known as a Schrader valve. 
and I'll explain this and take you up for a closer image after we get done the two position service valves here. You're going to notice that I have two hex keys uh, that I keep in the truck. One, I actually cut off the, the front part here because what I'm noticing now is that manufacturers are not making the inner chamber on the stem as deep as they used to. So this used to fit all the way down in there and right here used to go down inside the valve. But lately, on a lot of service valves, they're making it shallower and shallower. So you're only getting maybe this much into here. And then what is happening is it's it's going to end up stripping this. So what I did is I, I cut the tip off. And I use this often just for the vapor line service valves because it falls all the way down inside. So you can see how far this goes down in there. And this one doesn't go down in there as far. But on some of the newer ones, it doesn't even go in this far. It goes in less far. So that's why I have two hex keys on my ratcheting service wrenches. So this is the vapor line service valve. This is the liquid line service valve. And this tube right here on this two position service valve is connected to the compressor, where it can go to the accumulator than the compressor. This one right here connects to the condenser coil. So, so that's where that's going. These are your breeze on connections. So this gets connected to the line set here. This gets connected to the line set going to the evaporator coil. So this one goes to the metering device right in front of the evaporator coil. But that's where the tubing connects to. So if you were going to pump a system down, you would take this, this right here, and this would go all the way to the front seat position. By the way, this one you can see has a split ring at the top. They used to be all made that way, but the the problem with people trying to backseat these when there is no backseat, you know, what happens is it pops that split ring out, and then you're you have the potential this this service valve can shoot right out of here due to the refrigerant pressure. So a lot of them are now made like this so that you don't have the split ring accidentally popping and coming out from somebody trying to uh, force this stem counterclockwise. But anyway, when this is all the way down, it shuts off the, the, uh, the refrigerant flow and it locks it in the condenser. It doesn't allow the liquid refrigerant to go out to the metering device. So that's what happens during the pump down when you are front seating this service valve. And then you're front seating this one as well to lock the refrigerant in the outdoor unit. You have multiple kind of caps for these for where they go onto the ports to lock the refrigerant in in case these valve cores start leaking. But this one right here is a brass valve cap and it has an O-ring inside. So that O-ring is going to squish up against this flare seat and, and hold any refrigerant in inside this port right here. This right here is a plastic one and this is very common. But what I typically do is I'll replace these with a with a metal one. But this one right here is a flare type valve cap. And what you need to do is you need to drop a, a dab of refrigerant wheel down inside on the flare seat. And that's going to tighten up against this flare seat. And there is no rubber in that at all. So that will tighten down. You have to give it a good snug down once it's all the way tight with a with a small adjustable wrench in order to snug that on there. But now when we have an exposed port, what we do is we put a locking cap on there. So what it does is it restricts unauthorized access into, into the, uh, the access port of the system. So this is one type. Here's another. So you want to make sure that you have the keys available to unlock these, these uh, port caps. If you're going to vacuum a system like this, what you want to do is remove this valve core. So you can remove it with a tool like this. And then you can just take it out. So you could use you could use this, and and this tool actually stores extra valve cores in the back. You could use this tool, and for this right here, you could use the the back side. So you can remove a valve core from these ports as long as there's no pressure inside the system. If there is pressure in the system, then you're going to want to use the valve core removal tool. Just like this, you can actually replace the, the valve core while there's pressure in the system without leaking any refrigerant. So I have videos on that. You can just look up AC Service Tech uh, valve core removal tool. I also have links to other videos in the description section below, as well as some of the tools I use in this video. So right here, you can connect it just like this, 
And once you pull the valve core out, then you can shut this off, put the new valve core, and put it back in. So after you're done uh, disconnecting the hoses and if there is pressure in this right here uh, inside the system, then you want to go ahead and put bubble leak detector either on this port right here where the, the valve core is, or what you could do is you could use this valve core removal tool and you just take the back side out and you screw it right onto here. And essentially what you've created is a tube that connects to here. And then you can just put bubble leak detector right in the end and then you can see if this bubbles out. So either way, you're going to need to blow the, the bubble leak detector out of either the port or the end of this when you're all said and done. But if you do put it in the end of this, then then it's easy to blow out. It's just a, it's a tube. You can blow it out with air or whatever. Um, but you don't want to leave any bubble leak detector in this port right here when you're all said and done. Also, you could have a refrigerant leak out of the top, and that's especially true when you're doing a vacuum. So some people have asked that question to me about pulling a vacuum through these this port and this port and then leaking out of the top. So what I could say is that if the system is empty, what you could do is go ahead and front seat this all the way down, and then I'll show you what we're going to do next. So once the two position service valves are fully front seated, what you can do is just take a little nylog and put it onto a Q-tip. And you can take that Q-tip and you can just rub it along the inner walls. And then you can go ahead and back seat it, front seat it, back seat it. And what that'll do is that'll get a little of the lubricant onto the O-ring that seals the service valve. So that seems to be the only way to really uh, seal that enough to, to get a good vacuum on the, on the system when you have a, a leaky top service valve. On one like this, you can actually get a little nylog on your finger and then just rub it along the inner walls. And then you can back seat it, front seat it. So this is all while the system is off. And if the system is empty, you can do this. You could also do this if the system is off with refrigerant pressure inside. You can front seat it and then take the nylog and rub it along here and then back seat it again. The That whole time, uh, the refrigerant is going to be held in by the valve core right here. You just want to make sure that the system is off while you're doing that. The only other thing that you could do is you could try some refrigerant oil instead of the nylog. So either one will work, but if it continues to leak out of the top, then you're just going to have to replace that, that service valve. This is an up-close view of the valve core. So you can see there's a little spring inside there, but you're only gaining access to the refrigerant charge of a system through this tiny little section right between, right in there. And that is it. So you really don't want to be pulling vacuums through this and you really don't want to try to recover through this unless it's a worst case scenario and you just can't remove the valve core. Sometimes the service valves are in a, a very hard position in order to try to pull the, the valve cores out of. But this here is called the valve core depressor, which is the brass thing right in the middle. And what that does is that pushes down on that valve core to gain access through the, the valve core inside the port. And then the rubber gasket right there seals up against this port. So when these wear out, you have to replace them and you can typically unscrew this valve core depressor out in order to have an easier time replacing the gasket. You can buy replacement gaskets for those, so that's not a problem. These are low loss fittings, so you could have those on the end of the hose. This is referred to as a manual low loss fitting and this right here is a automatic low loss fitting. So that will store the refrigerant in the hoses. So this one will do it automatically when you disconnect this one. You have to turn the valve and all the refrigerant in the hose will be locked in the hose. And then this right here has a valve depressor with a back seat position. So you're able to lock the refrigerant in the hose attached to this port. You got to make sure there's two different versions of this. One has a back seat and one does not have a back seat. But uh, these, are, these are nice as well. I have all the tools linked down in the description section below. Make sure to check out the Refrigerant Charging and Service Procedures for Air Conditioning book. We have the outline right here is all clickable, so you can go to whatever page you're looking for. We also have it in paperback form, and the full outline is available over at acservicetech.com. Hope you enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.